Okay, so what is schizophrenia? It's a disease of thinking abnormally. This is a disease of thinking differently from everyone else. This is a disease of thinking in a way that everyone else thinks isn't right, and suddenly we are skating on thin ice of this transitioning from a world of neuropsychiatric disorders and medicine into a world of all sorts of hidden agendas of abuse. And psychiatry has been hand in hand in bed with all sorts of ideologues over the decades, over the years, in willing to hand out diagnoses of schizophrenia to political dissidents, to people you want to get rid of, and this is a totally loaded, loaded diagnosis when, most fundamentally, this is a disease of everybody else thinks you're not thinking normally. Because some of the time that describes a florid psychiatric disease that destroys your life, and some of the time it describes people who are just a pain in the ass, and some of the time it describes people who are going to transform the world by thinking differently. How can you possibly approach this disease in an objective way rather than it having just shot through with ideology? And one of the ways in which this can happen, one of the ways where you get some grounding in it, is to look at what the disease appears like in other cultures. Because you begin to see the commonalities, and this begins to impress you with the notion that there is, in fact, a core set of dysfunctions to the disease. So let me tell you about the one case of cross-cultural schizophrenia I've ever been exposed to. And I was going to bring slides, but I couldn't quite figure out how to scan them. So maybe eight years from now, I'll get it together for that technology. But it has to do with the time I spend in Africa and my nearest neighbors. The nearest neighbors there are from a tribe called the Maasai. These are nomadic pastoralists, and these are not the folks next door. This is as different of a culture as you could find on this planet. Men around puberty, boys around puberty, become warriors, spend the next 10 years in their warrior clans, as we've heard about, pillaging the neighbors, getting killed in return around age 25. As elders, they settle down and marry their first wife, typically a 13-year-old, and will, as soon as they can, add on more. This is a culture with, up until recently, a life expectancy in the 30s. This is a culture where people believe in all sorts of things that we would view as being paranormal. This is a culture in which people celebrate events by drinking terrines of cow blood. This is a very different bunch of folks. Let me tell you about the one schizophrenic Maasai who I've ever seen. And this was about 25 years ago, and I was in my camp, which was a few miles away from uh, this one village where I knew a lot of folks, and just sitting there minding my own business, and I had this one woman in there who was sort of my sort of closest friend or whatever in the village, and I suddenly see she is running up the mountain with a bunch of the other women from the village in this completely agitated state. They come roaring into my camp, totally flummoxed and just like completely agitated. These are people who do not get agitated over things very readily. These are people who, as a puberty right, have to go out and kill a lion or don't come back. So when Maasai are getting all crazed about something, this is something worth paying attention to. They're totally crazed and they're saying, somebody in the village has done something very wrong and I need to come and help them. Turns out, what they wanted me to do was bring my car. That's the way in which I was going to be helpful. So they impressed me into doing this, and we all pile into the car and start driving down and heading towards the village. And as we're getting there, I'm beginning to get some information. And what I see is them telling me about a woman in the village who has done something wildly inappropriate, and they've had it with her. Now, I had been around that area for about four years at that point, knew most of the people in that village, and this was someone who I had never encountered. Aha, uh -huh. socially isolated, living in the back of some hut at the far corner of the village, a first sort of hint. Okay, so they're describing to me that she has done something inappropriate. She has killed a goat. You don't do that. You don't do that if you are a woman. You don't do that if it is not a ceremony. You don't do it the way she has done it. She has grabbed somebody's goat and ripped its throat open with her teeth and was now there with the goat and everybody had had it with her. 
So we're driving there and I'm listening to this and I'm saying, whoa, and this sounds like a psychotic break. This is going to be cool. This is going to be really interesting. I wonder what it'll be like to talk to the family and find out sort of what the symptoms have been. Or I wonder if she's going to have any insight. It's going to be fascinating to talk to her about this. So I get into the village and this person I was now planning to have some good heart to hearts with about their tangential thinking, out comes this huge naked woman with a goat in her mouth by the throat covered in goat blood and goat urine and goat shit and this woman gives this howling yell, charges across the village, knocks me over and attempts to strangle me. I'm a normal kind of guy. <laughs> you know, normal sort of fantasy life and that kind of, never once in the darkest recesses of my mind did this strike me as something that was appealing. I'm lying there, she's throttling me, I'm thinking this is how I'm going to wind up dying. My poor parents are going to have to deal with the stigma of this for the rest of their lives that this is he's done in by someone with a goat in her mouth and thinking this. So fortunately everybody else was much more clear headed and they pull her off me and what they proceed to do is push her into my Jeep. And and they pile on top of her and they say, let's go. So I collect myself and leap in and we head off driving there. And this woman was floridly out of control there. But, you know, we're driving somewhere. Where are we driving? We're driving to the nearest government clinic which was about 25 miles away and consisted of a wood shack and a nurse there, a government nurse, who as a result of his three weeks of training gave out malarial medication for anything you came to complain about. And what they were going to do was they wanted to get rid of her. So we go driving and we eventually get to this clinic where what they proceed to do is push her into the hut and hammer the door closed. So I'm sitting there at this point saying, okay, well, we've, we've containment. So what do we do now? Do we do we talk to her? Or does the nurse talk to her? Do we go and get the family? What do you, so I, I turn to my friends and I say, so what do we do now? And they say, let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> Showing an important thing. Even in a culture as different from ours, nobody has a whole lot of tolerance for the mentally ill. Let's get out of here. So they persuade me to go. We get into the vehicle and start the long drive back. After a while, you know, the cars aired out a bit and everybody's calming down a bit. And I decide this was wonderful. What a marvelous opportunity to learn about some cross cultural psychiatry or whatever. So I turn to my friend who's sitting next to me there and I say, So what do you think was wrong with that woman? And she looks at me as if I'm an idiot. She says, She's crazy. And I said, Well, how do you know? How do you know? And she said, she hears voices. I say, ah, you guys hear voices. Maasai hear voices. They do trance dancing before they do sort of these around the clock cattle runs. They hear voices of ghosts, that sort of thing. I say to her, what's the big deal? You hear voices. And she says, no, 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 it's different. Then I say, well, what else was she doing wrong? And she says, she killed a goat. And I say, you guys kill goats, but again, this wasn't how it's done. There is an old long-standing belief among Maasai men that it is very bad luck to have women observe you eating meat, so they get to go off on their own and eat all the goat meat, and it's done in a certain ritualized way. You do not kill a goat if you are a woman, if you are a naked, yelling banshee of a woman in the middle of the village with your bare hands and teeth. You don't do this. So I'm sitting there and I'm saying, well, do you know, this, it's kind of hard for me to tell the difference here. And she says, in a sense, idiot, she hears voices at the wrong time. And that's the core, ultimately, of the objectivity that's needed in this disease. In order to understand what counts as abnormal thought, you first have the huge challenge of understanding all the different ways that normal thought can manifest itself. And that is a classic problem in training psychiatrists sitting in some inner city clinic, recognizing that the amount of cultural variety there, the different ways in which you can be normal, is extraordinary and extraordinarily challenging at times, you are on very thin ice deciding you know what counts as abnormal thinking before you have a very wide sense of what can count as normal.